everyone, my name is Mandy Lynn. I'm the author of the fantasy novels Essence, I Am Mercy, and soon to be published Thrill and All, She's Not Here, and also the creator of AuthorTube Academy. <laughs> I am here at the Wander Writers Retreat, and I have two lovely ladies with me here today, and we're gonna be talking about editing on a budget, how to find editors, and maybe some other things that, that may come up. Hi guys, I'm Amy Driver. I'm a young adult science fiction fantasy, but I kind of am a hybrid, so it's like a futuristic fantasy author. And I am here on YouTube, Twitter, and like basically all over the internet, and I'm gonna say follow your dreams to find me on the internet. My name is Bethany Antazada, and I'm the author of Evelyn's Number, Pearl's Number, and The Confident Corgi, and I like writing. <laughs> Yeah. When it comes to self-publishing, I like to say there's some things you shouldn't cut corners on and editing is one of them because as much as you may want to just kind of quickly type it out, do your self-editing and publish it, that is not an option because you just need to go through a lot of different rounds and you need the professionals out in the field. So we're going to talk about how you can get your book prepped a little bit before you send it to the editor because you want your book prepared as much as you can before you get it there to the editor. That way you get your money's worth so they're working on the, the big, like the things that you didn't spot instead of the things you could have spotted yourself and now you've wasted your time with this professional editor, you've wasted time and money. I feel like there is such a thing as writer's blindness. I know I've said this in some of my videos videos where like you even though it's like a glaring error and it's so clear like a really big spelling error or just or like a plot hole where like you've said before somebody's sitting and in the next chapter they're standing but you just you're so close to your story and the writer's blindness keeps you from seeing it so having someone else read it another pair of eyes um, especially a professional is huge and it makes a huge difference. <laughs> also what I would say is because um, I just finished my first draft of Gravity Rising which is my WIP and which I'm really excited about because I hate drafting. I love revising. I'm an editor. Um, I work in a you know technical writing type stuff and I edit proposals all day which I love. Anyway, um, I what I would recommend is like a huge way to save money on editing is to kind of not skip steps but mold them together. So clean your manuscript as much as you possibly can. Like get someone to read it. What doesn't really matter. No, we're going to talk about like CPs and stuff throughout the video. But you know, get anyone you can who it doesn't even have to be an editor. Just anyone to read your manuscript. The less that the editor has to do, the cheaper, theoretically, it will be. Mm -hmm. So um, as an editor, whenever I edit sections for my job, like the more time I have to spend on any document, like the more time I have to charge to a specific like, code. So um, just as an editor, if you actually clean your manuscript, and there's tons of ways that you can do that, um, programs and stuff like that. And that but, can apply to um, your word yeah. count too. Mm -hmm. Like Absolutely. for instance, if they don't go by time, a lot of editors will go by word count. That's and a so great point. if you edit, um, for instance, I had 120,000 words <laughs> when I had a first draft of Evelyn's number. And so I was able to edit that down myself and with betas, uh, a good 20,000 words were edited out in that, uh, depending on what you pay, because typically you pay per word different percentages, mm -hmm. but it can make it massive difference yeah yeah uh, so <laughs> just just sitting back and taking those words out instead of having an editor need to take it out because I had my editor for I believe it was essence they just highlighted this whole chapter and was like delete yeah, yeah. and, <laughs> and you're like, I just paid them how much <laughs> for those words to <laughs> delete them yeah, so you obviously want to get as much, as prepared as you can. So one of my favorite kind of tricks and things that maybe people aren't thinking about when it comes to having someone edit your book. So you've got your CP, you've got your beta readers, but something people don't think about is uh, college as a resource. So you can actually, I worked on She's Not Here as an independent study with a professor. So I actually, she worked with me exclusively for the first 30 pages to kind of make it work, to make the start of the story work really well. How interesting. Yeah, I got college well, credit for it too. Okay. So that's one example if you have a, prof a professor that you're comfortable with working with. Um, otherwise, another example is a college student, an English student, who would maybe want to edit your manuscript for cheap. Now obviously this isn't proofing, this isn't nitty gritty stuff, this is going to be 
big picture stuff, if you're having a hard time getting beta readers, this would kind of be a very trustworthy beta reader. Because the thing with beta readers is that they aren't always, they don't always give good feedback. You. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. They don't always give good feedback. They try. So yes, but. so you can't always, they they mean very well, but you can't always know whether or not all beta readers are gonna give the best feedback. Sometimes they may be like, everything is wonderful, which is great, but you want something productive. Yeah, like and I do that as a beta reader, so I'm a horrible mm -hmm. beta reader. I'm like, it's great. You don't want her. <laughs> Trust me, I'm the opposite. So I'm, right now I'm beta reading Sorry. Jenna Street's and uh, I'm literally editing it because I'm an editor mm -hmm. and so it's like yeah. free editing for her but she's actually doing like an entire rewrite so it's awesome but um, yeah like sometimes you get beta readers who are like editors and so you can actually get great editing tips and mm -hmm. sometimes it's just like yes. this is great sorry to tease yeah. your video and, <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you get beta readers that just disappear like yeah, you send yeah. them the manuscript always. and then they never get back to you There's always a couple so however if you have a, a college student so first of all it has to be an English student mm -hmm. preferably uh, creative writing mm -hmm. that's that's great that's good, um, sure. that's and good. if you're paying them they have to get back to you so and it doesn't have to be anything pricey it could just I don't know I've never done it before but I've I've heard of other people who have done it so just kind of work with the student to see you know maybe for 50 bucks they'd be willing to go through it and fifty dollars as compared to a college to, student yeah yeah that that's a me that's a that's like a month's worth of food yeah. if you play the game right Wrong <laughs> but yeah so you could work with a, a, a college student who can provide amazing feedback because they're taking classes on doing this exactly and to build on that you can also use um, I used uh, Goodreads they have different forums where you can look uh, to hire editors and I found that there were a lot of people on Goodreads who were trying to start their editing business mm -hmm. so because of that they weren't charging the like drastic prices you know they were trying to really lower their prices mm -hmm. just because they wanted to build their portfolio so you can get um, a really really good editor like you'll have to vet them you'll have to get your sample edits uh, which we should talk about <laughs> um, but you can find somebody who's actually super talented but they just haven't done it a lot yet mm -hmm. so they're gonna give you an amazing price just to kind of add to that because I've been researching editors just because I wasn't sure if my aunt was gonna be able to edit it or not but um, going on Facebook it's kind of the same thing as Goodreads, but a lot of people will actually be willing to lower their prices if you're a part of a Facebook group and it's a part of a community. So there's that communal aspect to it. So whenever I see people say, I'm having a really hard month, I need to publish my book in two months, mm -hmm. what do I do? I see tons and tons of editors who literally say, I will give you like 10% discount, I'll give you payment plans. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you might still have to pay the price, but Tons of people are so willing to work with authors. It's ridiculous and at the same time with like the sample edit just kind of maybe this can be the transition yeah. but, um, I actually always look at their website because if their website is all over the place like how on earth am I supposed to mm -hmm. Like let them look at my manuscript like I, I want to trust them so if there's like typos or if they're like what they have no website mm -hmm. and it's just like riddled with just grammatical grammatical <laughs> grammatical yeah. issues like yeah. it's it, you don't always have to approach the sample edit as their you know the their first only. deep dive mm -hmm. so sometimes you can look at their I mean Twitter's a bad example because I do tons of typos I mean you would know I think. don't worry about Twitter yeah, yeah I feel but, like we're being human on Twitter yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and hello. social media so I mean Tangent. just looking out for their like, author website or their other platforms mm -hmm. it's like they have a massive like social media platform on like Facebook or whatever like just make sure you research them just to kind of get them out of the way or say I'm really interested let's then, yeah. yeah another way you can research them because that's really good is to um, actually ask them like what other books that they've edited Great and you can um, yeah. actually go on Amazon you can pull those books up on Amazon first of all see them. if they were credited because that could say if there's a good relationship <laughs> and then you could also yeah read the first especially the very first pages if you're gonna find a typo on that don't work with them <laughs> yeah 
That's pretty yeah. self-explanatory. <laughs> and going back to the discounts real quick, because I, I totally forgot about oh, yeah. this. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> like you were saying earlier, yeah. it doesn't hurt to ask for a discount. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually, when I was publishing Essence, I was obviously on a budget. I was for 15, 16 when it actually, it's still no, 16, publish it at 17. I can't remember shocked. anymore. That's so cool. Um, <laughs> but I, I found an editor and I asked, do you have a student discount? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Don't be afraid to ask. Yeah, because I explained. I'm like, I am. I'm 16. <laughs> self-publishing my book, but I want a professional yeah. editor. Yeah. And they said, no, but we can give you 10% off. I'm Aww. like, okay. okay. That's so cool. And then <laughs> when I went back for IA Mercy, they gave me 10% off again because I was a repeat customer. Ooh, um, I love that. So, yes. but I don't recommend that company anymore. Oh. Uh, <laughs> but it never hurts to ask. And where did you find your editor? Because I think finding editors is tricky and I know I found some places, but. So my editor, I found through the recommendation of a nonfiction book cool. about self-publishing. So I, okay. like, I contacted the author of that of that self-publishing book, and cool. said, you know, I have you ever worked with this? What'd you think of them? Okay. And you know, then I tried them out myself. They did great for book one. They didn't do so great for book two. One other place that you can find an editor is to use a website called Readly, which is what I used, and it's kind of like a marketplace. I want to say um, where you can find different kinds of professionals such as editors and your marketing people and your cover designers and I think a lot of other things and um, you can find editors of all levels developmental line editing proofreading um, and that is a really great resource to go the last thing we wanted to talk about was a pricing like what you should be expecting when it comes to the price tag of your editor yeah, and honestly, there's such a wide range. Yeah. And um, Mandy's already said this, so I'm kind of stealing your thunder, but like, you get what you pay for. So with me, my first book, I actually paid only about 300 bucks all total. And typically it's um, by word, so you're gonna have to take your word count and then do the math. Um, and everybody's word count is gonna be different. So sure. you can't ever, that's why it's so hard to get an exact quote. Um, for how much is normal because everybody's so different. Okay. Plus another thing is is that if your manuscript, if you send it to like a proof, like for like the proof, and oh, yeah, the, different the editor mm -hmm. decides like this is a mess, like mm -hmm. I'm gonna need more mm -hmm. time, that means more money. More mm -hmm. time yeah. is yep. money. Absolutely. absolutely. So that's why it's so, just so critical to clean your manuscript as absolutely much as possible. Yes. Use Pro Writing Aid, Grammarly. Mm -hmm. We can make videos about that on our own <laughs> channels, but um, those tools are just so, so so important if you want to save money, clean your manuscript as much as yeah. possible. So Please. basically, there's a lot of factors that go into it, um, but generally, you could go from just a few hundred dollars to like thousands, thousands. and yeah. thousands of dollars. Um, and so, I found that going the minimum that I did was actually really good for my first book, and I'm happy with it. But now that I um, when the books start making money, I want to start being able to invest more, and so I am choosing a more expensive editor, and it's personal choice, so don't let anybody tell you the right way, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Like, it depends on what you need. I feel like everyone thinks that their way is the right way, and I feel like the mm -hmm. average that I've seen, because I've, I've put so much effort into researching like how what editors, because I'm trying to become an editor eventually for fiction, so I've, I've, I've put a lot of time in researching this. So a lot of people either undervalue themselves or overvalue themselves, and tons of people do this. They're guilty of it. I'm guilty of it too. But um, the, the standard format, if you, if I don't know, I feel like a thousand dollars for most manuscripts. Yeah. So for I, like a I tend to pay a thousand to two thousand. Yeah. And that's for like an eighty thousand word manuscript. Yeah. True. So, and I would like to say that's a that's a fair. That's price. a pretty yeah. good deal. That is a yeah. fair price for a really good quality editor. Yeah. And that's for that. And that, at least for me, that means. Um, the line edits in mm -hmm. the proofing yeah. as a whole mm -hmm. for yep. sure and Absolutely. It, like you may say sit back and say wow That's a lot, but if you're serious about this and you want to make sure that you publish the book correctly the first time Because you don't want to like go back and be like Ugh, I gotta <laughs> fix this <laughs> You just because then like if you have to republish a book down the line you have to re go through the editing process all over again mm -hmm. So just do it right the first time yeah. and, and you know invest in yourself, but if you're on a budget um, I'll just throw this out there. <laughs> if you're on if you want to be cheap, <laughs> yeah. um, which I get that, and I think that's really wise to be careful how you spend your money, um, because as authors we could spend on anything. There's so many good things. I would say. 
consider um, using people in your life that are um, either English majors or like you said, college professors, college students, people with some skills and the willingness to do it for free. I think that we all have some people in our lives or we can seek them out who would be willing to do uh, very similar things for a very low cost and it's not professional, but if you get enough of those eyes on your story, mm -hmm. that could also yeah. make a huge difference. You never know till you ask. There mm -hmm. you go. And yeah. I think that a lot of people don't think of editing as, you know, like they're part of their author platform just because it's like so clinical. This is right, that's not right, this is what you should do versus not do. But like for me as an editor and then writing a book and then being an ed like an author. It, editing is so important because it's not only, it's not the editor's reputation. Of course, if you want to credit the editor and people look at it and the book has just horrible editing, it's like their <laughs> reputation's on the line. But the first name people see is, is yours. So I automatically will return a book if it's just riddled with, with typos. And so this is something, it's, it's controversial, but you got to invest in yourself if you want to have that clean manuscript ready for publishing and I just think it's so important because otherwise you're gonna have lots of one star reviews. Mm. This isn't great, like this is yeah. just riddled with inaccuracies and so it's just, <laughs> it's so important, you know, and I'm sure that y'all agree with this, but as an editor, it, I just see so, so many things published and it shocks and horrifies me to, to know that it just doesn't, no one cares. And not all of it is self-published. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Some of it's traditional publishers <laughs> yes. that are cutting corners a little yeah. too much. <laughs> so that is it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed learning everything about editing, about budgets, about what to look for, how to find them. Um, editors galore. <laughs> editors galore. <laughs> As always, be sure to check out these ladies. Their links will be down below. You can check out their books and future books. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let me know in the comments down below if you found this video helpful, if there's any other tips we missed, if you feel like you know a great resource for finding editors, because we always love to hear more about those resources. Otherwise, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, comment down below, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye! Bye.